Guys, I am here with a really exciting box. It's actually a box I opened with you guys uh, several months ago because it had in it a snake I'd been dreaming about for a long time. And that was my false water cobra. And uh, you guys probably know how that went. Since that time, I have received a lot of comments about what an idiot I am for handling a venomous snake with my bare hands. And I did learn from my experience the first time, because you know how that went. And so I've been handling him ever since uh, with gloves. Just, just while I get to know him. And actually, the truth is, he hasn't tried to bite me at all since then. But I did want to give you guys an update on how he's doing. And he's wonderful! So this is Shelby. And Shelby I bought from Kyle Wilson out in Kansas. And he is probably, at least as far as I've been able to tell, the best breeder of false water cobras in the United States. Uh, I mean, he produces some awesome stuff on a regular basis. And if I decide to get a second false water cobra, I'm definitely going back to Kyle. I've had a great experience. Uh, at least following the first few minutes after I got this guy and he's beautiful you can see his mask has come in quite nicely and he's put on a considerable amount of size I had a little bit of trouble getting him feeding regularly on frozen thawed mice but he's actually become one of the greatest feeders I have because all I have to do now is put a frozen thawed mouse in with him and he just comes up and swallows it there's no no drama associated with it. I don't have to be startled by the strike. Anyway, he's living up to all of my hopes and dreams. You can see his temperament is actually fantastic. And uh, like I said, he hasn't tried to bite me again. So pretty soon I'll stop handling him with the gloves. While I was getting him feeding really well, I've, I've only handled him uh, infrequently because I just wanted to make sure he was eating well before I really, really started working with him. But we're to that point now where I'm going to start handling him uh, a lot more often and I should be able to gain a lot of trust from him and a lot of confidence in him and I'll, I'll shed the gloves and and be as big an idiot as I was when I first pulled him out of the box but I was too excited for gloves I just needed to, to feel this amazing snake and, and for the record he is a false water cobra it's not that the water is false, but he is a real cobra. A lot of people seemed very concerned that I was handling a cobra. And these guys are not a cobra. They're not even from the same continent as cobras. But they look a lot like a snake called a water cobra. And so that's why they are called false water cobras. They are rear fanged venomous. And the effects of their venom seem mild generally. They were mild for me, though I did have some itching. But some people report necrosis. So that's why I was still a little bit nervous when I got tagged and I'm trying to avoid a, a second exposure to that venom anytime soon but I love him. Now let's put him away and talk about the main topic of this video. What I want to talk to you about today are my thoughts regarding how we house snakes. Uh, and to accompany me as I discuss this topic is another one of my dream snakes. I've got a few snakes that I just dreamed about for months or years before I was able to get one. The snake that you just saw, Shelby, was definitely one of those snakes. False water cobras, oh my goodness. And I'm honestly still dreaming about an adult false water cobra because those are a special, special snake. The blue-eyed leucistic ball python was also a snake that I dreamed about for years. And Sinatra is one that I produced myself. I'm actually using him as a breeder for the first time this year. So... There will be little baby Sinatras, and I'm pretty excited about them. You notice how I, I transported him here, and I did so in a small tub. Now that is much smaller than the kinds of tubs that people normally keep snakes in, but snakes are, especially like ball pythons, very frequently kept in tubs. Sometimes they're kept in glass enclosures, and sometimes they're kept in really, really beautifully decorated enclosures, and sometimes they're kept in things that are very, very sterile and barren that maybe just have like newspaper and a water bowl and a little hide and that's it. And, and so there's been a really big question about, you know, how should we be housing snakes? You've maybe seen that Emily from Snake Discovery 
with whom we've already done a collaboration and with whom we have more collaborations planned late this summer. So I'm very excited about that. And Brian Barczyk have been planning to hold sort of a symposium, uh, like a, a town hall discussion about the direction that the hobby should go as far as how we house snakes. I've been invited to participate in this symposium and right now the date's a little bit up in the air so I will keep you guys informed about exactly when that will be. But, but I am really excited to get to meet with a lot of the breeders and other, other reptile YouTubers and discuss this really important topic. I'm sure my opinion will change as a result of this, this town hall, if it's effective at all, I should learn things and learn to think about things in a, in a different way. And I'm definitely a person that is easily persuaded by evidence and sound reasoning. I think there will be a lot of people there that can bring up some points I've never thought about before. So my opinion on this topic will very likely change. But I, I kind of wanted to give you guys my thoughts up front about this topic and also ask you guys about your thoughts, you know, and what you might suggest, because, you know, I want to come to that discussion as informed as possible, and I'm just one person, but there are thousands and thousands of you guys that have a great idea, great insight, and great experience, and so I'm asking you, please share that with me down in the comments. So getting to my thoughts, I think the, the absolute top priority when it comes to how we house snakes is the well-being of the snakes. Essentially, what is best for the mental and physical well-being of a snake? And, and in order to address this, it is really important that we not anthropomorphize snakes. Meaning that we do not think of snakes as small, legless humans that we're keeping. Because what is best for you is, generally speaking, not going to be best for a snake. What you want in your enclosure is not the same thing that will benefit a snake. That, that's actually the reason that if a snake gets away in your house and you can't find it for a long time, there's a pretty good chance it will die because your house is not a suitable enclosure for a snake. So you can't think about it that way. If we can't think about it like by putting ourselves in their no shoes, how can we understand what is really best for a snake? I think one of the, the first things we should do is look at what these snakes are doing and where they live in the wild. Speaking for most snakes, because when you're a noodle with a head, the world is a scary place, snakes spend a lot of their time in a hole. It's of course not all snakes. A lot of snakes spend most of their time up in a tree, but a large percentage of snakes, like ball pythons, are going to seek a hole somewhere. They're only going to leave the safety of that hole when they need proper temperatures, like to digest their food, when they need water, when they need to get food, and when they need to find a mate, and maybe to poop. All right, because you don't want to just poop in your hole all day if you're planning to stay there for a long time. Other than that, they're probably going to try to stay in the hole. Uh, and that's actually why I transport them in a rather small container because a snake is less stressed when they can feel something kind of touching all sides of their body because that feels like a hole and not out in the open where they're in danger. Honestly, if a snake, being a noodle with a head, could find some sort of a magical hole somewhere that had the proper humidity and temperature and into which water and food were regularly provided, poop was removed, and maybe occasionally mates came in for a little bit, uh, they might not ever leave that hole. I mean, wh why would they? It's the greatest hole in the world. The next thing that we should look for are, are things like sort of normal behavior and signs of stress coming from the snake. Things to look for would be like failure to eat, if they're regurgitating, and throwing up their food if they are restless, then something is wrong with the enclosure. They're stressed. Also, if they're uh, having poor sheds, if they're in poor health, sick, or especially if a snake dies, they're very likely is something wrong with the way that we're keeping them. What is best for the specific snake that you're trying to keep and, and for which you're trying to set up an enclosure will depend greatly on the exact species 
of Snake that we're talking about. The real key is to be very well informed and to build the proper enclosure before you get the snake. But when it comes to keeping a snake in a way that is suitable for the snake's physical and mental well-being, there are actually probably many ways to do this right. So the second priority after what is best for the snake is probably what is best for the hobby and to a degree your personal enjoyment of your pet. You know, and, and this is largely just because, you know, knowing what is actually best for the snake isn't really worth much if it's illegal to keep one or if it's illegal to house it in that way. And so sometimes the, the way that the hobby is viewed is almost as important, not as, but almost as important as what is truly best for the snake. And the, the truth is that most people are completely ignorant about what is best for a snake and most people will anthropomorphize snakes they'll just they'll look at a snake enclosure and go well i wouldn't want to live in there and no you wouldn't but as long as they're uninformed it's going to be very difficult for them to ever change their mind about that i think that there are two solutions to this problem one of them and this is the more short-term solution is to provide an enclosure that both meets the needs of the snake and is aesthetically pleasing to humans so that they can look in there and go, oh wow, what a paradise. I would like to live in there, but it's still suitable for the snake. That would be one approach. The more long-term solution, I think, and it's something that we're striving to do, and, and I imagine you are striving to do as well, is to educate the public. And it is really important when trying to educate people who are not informed and maybe aren't interested in being informed to be very polite and courteous and understanding when doing so. Informing the general public is one of the major purposes of this channel. It's also one of the big reasons that we focus on science and how science works and how to reason scientifically as well as how to pick the right pet reptile for you because you need to understand how to interpret and gather strong evidence so that you can make a compelling case to people who are uninformed about these topics. I'm really excited to be a part of this panel that's coming up. Uh, I, I, I expect that I'll learn a lot and I'm really excited to hear what your thoughts are because I expect that I might be more informed by the things that you guys have to share with me even than I will be after a few hours on this panel. I don't know how long they're planning to meet. But I, I'm, I'm really, really excited to bring your collective wisdom to the table at the time that, that we'll be sharing this. I, I, I hope that you've appreciated some of my upfront thoughts on this topic. And, and I very much look forward to hearing from you. Well, I got a crazy boa right at the moment. But we wanted to add, we're, we're making a little update to this video because since the time that we filmed it, it's become kind of apparent that I don't think this little symposium is actually going to happen. Um, but it was fun actually getting to think about where, you know, what my thoughts are on this topic. It's one that I, I probably wouldn't have spent much time considering and I would still love to hear your thoughts and feedback. You know, especially just in case sometime down the road, we do have this, this discussion. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Also, thank you to our patrons at Patreon. By putting ourselves in their no shoes, he's not going to come at you and bite you. Says the man with gloves on. Well, <laughs> you were a crazy boa. You were a crazy boa during that whole thing.